Woo. Oh yeah, baby. So this guy is gonna be targeted towards beginner fishermen and that's just because they get a ton of information from other anglers and the internet and they don't really know how to prioritize this information. For example, on a fishing forum, a guy said he was at his parents' dock and he wanted to catch some redfish and he wanted some lure recommendations. And people went on to recommend uh, gold spoons and plastics, oh, which are good lures, but the problem is that there are probably no redfish just off that dock. And that's just because you can't just go throw a lure anywhere and expect to catch fish. So I have three major key points I want to talk about. And the first one is that there has to be fish to catch fish. And a lot of beginners will go out there and chuck lures for hours and they're gonna get frustrated because they get no bites. And why is this? It's because not all fishing spots are the same. So how do we find a good fishing spot? There are three points I wanna talk about within finding a good fishing spot. And the first one is having variable water depths. So being stuck on shore, we don't have the privilege to cover tons of water with, our, uh, with a boat. And so we want different habitats uh, within walking or casting distance. And a good way to have this is just by having variable water depths. One day the fish might be feeding on benthic invertebrates and one day they might be feeding on bait fish that are up in the shallows. The second point I wanna talk about in finding a good spot is having moving water. So let's think about why moving water is important to catching fish. Moving water means moving nutrients and starting from the bottom of the food chain means moving planktonic creatures. And then we have bait fish feeding on these planktonic creatures and then we have predators feeding on these bait fish. Basically moving water is just gonna help uh, there to be more feeding predator fish. And on top of all that, you have to remember we're fishing from shore. So having moving water means there's gonna be fish coming to us rather than us boating around and trying to find the fish. Now the third point I have to finding a good fishing spot is to have some kind of structure around. And structure is important for three reasons. It attracts bait, and it allows for predators for an ambush point, and it's where these larger predator fish can also feel safe themselves. So there's different types of structure, and it can range from simple things like grass flats and vegetation to things like bridge pilings, and even uh, deeper oyster reefs and things like that. Of course, having multiple of these is even better. All right, so before we move on to the second major key point, go ahead and give this video a like if you think it's helpful, and also comment below if you're a more experienced angler and have some tips to put yourself in the comments. Holy cow, that's a really nice one. All right, the second major key point is realizing that fishing from shore with lures is gonna be very hit or miss. You can hit a good spot with good conditions, everything looks good, and there's just no fish moving through that day. And it's important to realize this so you can have realistic expectations uh, that won't make you get super frustrated and discouraged right away. What can we do to combat this? Well, if you live near the coast like I do, um, you can just go out there and put in time. And if you put in tons of time, you're sure to have a couple good days and a lot of very solid days as well. If a spot has been slow one day, uh, more than likely it's gonna be slow the next day as well. A good thing you can do is to fish that spot whenever there's a weather change or a big tide change. Now I know a lot of you guys do not live at the coast like me, so you're probably only gonna have a couple days to fish. So in this situation, some things you can do is to check out local fishing reports on your local forum. Like in Corpus, we have Corpus Christi Fishing Forum and see where people are catching fish. And you can also ask around at things like bait shops uh, or tackle stores such as Roy's. Now onto our third major key point, which is times to fish. Now again, we're going with the theme of three points and there are three major factors when choosing a time to fish and that is time of day, uh, tides, and also times of year. So most all of us fishermen know that fishing is best in the morning and the evening. Sometimes the morning will be amazing and then the evening will be slow or sometimes it's the other way around. So you just have to get out there and see which one's better for that day. Next up we have tide. And just to keep this really simple, you want moving water. If you do have that moving water, there's a much better chance of there being more fish activity. Now it's not always good to have current ripping through but even a little bit of current can really spice up the fishing activity. 
I also really like fishing when there's a big change in water level. Like if the water level has been the same for several weeks cool. and then you notice the water is like a foot higher than normal, this could be a really good day to go fishing. Now finally we have times of year. I'm not going to go into much detail here, but basically you need to change up what you're doing, what you're throwing, and your uh, retrieve styles and things like that for different water temperatures. Of course, you might want to go slower during the winter and maybe speed it up, do more erratic things during the warmer water months. And also there are different fish to catch during different times of year. Um, like during early winter, we have that flounder one, which is excellent. Okay, just to reiterate those three points, there has to be fish to catch fish, and then you have to realize shore fishing can be very hit or miss. And finally, there are different times to fish. All right, so now let's talk about some lures, baby. Now a thing I think a lot of beginners do is go out there and try and find this magic lure that's gonna work all the time, and it just doesn't exist. As a beginner, you don't really wanna try and reinvent the wheel. Just use some things that are proven and that are good. All right, first of all, let's talk about the mainstay of shore fishing with lures, and that is soft plastics. So the first thing to talk about with soft plastic is the jig head you're gonna wanna use. Now most jig heads are pretty much the same. I don't really care what brand I'm using, but something that's very important is the weight of the jig heads. I recommend bringing at least two weights. First off is a 1 4th ounce, and that's gonna be for your shallower fishing, and also if you wanna slower fall. And then I also recommend a 3 8 ounce if you're gonna wanna fish the bottom more, and also some deeper water. Now if you're fishing really shallow in the flats, you may wanna use a 1 8 and if you're fishing a lot deeper, you're gonna have to go heavier than 3 8 ounces. Now for the soft plastic, there are so many brands now, but some good ones to name are uh, gulp baits like gulp shrimp and gulp swimming mullet. They're really solid, they have scent. They're smaller baits, which is good to get more bites. Um, some other soft plastics are things like um, egret baits, wedge tail, or Norton sand shed, and also stuff like down south lures. Now basically you could use soft plastic all times of year in pretty much every condition. It's just the best all around bait and that's what I really recommend starting off with and try to fish, catch some fish on that and then maybe you can move on to different things. Of course I always love to throw top water so maybe bring a top water to a walking bait like a Super Spook Junior or a Super Spook or a Mirror Lure She Dog and throw those in the morning and maybe later at night or if fish are very active. Hey, if you're new to my videos, please consider subscribing. And if you found the video useful, give the video a like. And also, if you're an experienced angler and want to add something, go ahead and put that in the comments, man. Oh. There he did. Yep. There he did. Just a little slight tick and you know you got a bite. Wow. He's staying on top just shaking his head. Worked for some of your buddies, but I think you're not gonna get away from me. The commentary. Oh, it's a big girl too. Dang, they love to shake their heads. Look at that fish. Well, that was not good. You done, buddy? Oof, they know what they're doing. Oh, there's a big fish. Yes, oh my God, dude. What happened to your teeth? You got no, you got no fangs. Oh, wow. That is a fat girl right there. And cold, man, jeez. Thank you. 